ladies and gentlemen, um, and welcome to the RDS for this day-long conference on the economic and financial crisis. Um, the focus of the conference is to look at ways in which we can exit the crisis, not only here in Ireland, of course, but also in the rest of Europe. You don't need me to tell you that uh, this conference is taking place at a particularly difficult time uh, for Ireland and for the European Union. Uh, we have been organizing uh, a series of uh, meetings uh, throughout the country uh, to provide information about the crisis itself and the work being done uh, to emerge from it. And we also try to provide fora in which discussions and debate uh, can be encouraged and questions can be asked and hopefully answered. Um, in the autumn of, of last year, we launched a series of public seminars uh, throughout the country uh, and brought a more limited version of today's event uh, to Sligo, Waterford, Limerick and Athlone. And the, the success of these seminars pointed to a, a big sort of public hunger for more information uh, and uh, better, to be better able to understand what was going on. Um, and we've, we've, we've decided to continue with these regional seminars, but also this is sort of the crowning moment of all of these seminars, our biggest event uh, here that's taking place in Dublin today. I'm delighted that we have such a, a distinguished lineup of speakers. Uh, our keynote speakers, Patrick Honahan, Governor of the Central Bank uh, of Ireland, Alain Lamassour, MEP, who is Chair of the European Parliament's Budget Committee, um, I'd also like to draw your attention to the fact that, in each, that each part of the programme will be followed by a question and answer session, which will give you the opportunity to engage with the panels of speakers. So it's meant to be as interactive uh, as possible uh, today. Um, now, as you know, the 27 heads of state and government are continuing their summit meeting today in Brussels to discuss the very theme of this conference, and the good news is that uh, you have probably seen that it was agreed overnight that the Eurogroup will examine the situation of the Irish financial sector with a view to further improving the sustainability of Ireland's EU IMF uh, programme. This agreement, uh, as part of a move to break the vicious cycle between uh, banks and sovereigns, is clearly a welcome development and one which I look forward to hearing your reactions today. Um, indeed, the summit, uh, there weren't very high expectations for this summit, but we have all been proved wrong on this count because it seems that there have been some great breakthroughs made. Uh, it is amazing what happens at four o'clock in the morning. Um, we also have today the former president of the European Parliament, Pat Cox, who has agreed to be rapporteur uh, and will have the unenviable task of trying to bring together the solutions and ideas from the conference and provide a summary uh, of the proceedings this afternoon. So good luck with that, Pat, because it's, it's, it's a hard task. If I could just say a word about the context uh, that we're working in at the moment uh, and turn to developments over the last couple of years uh, at EU level to provide uh, a, a sort of a background for today's discussions. We are facing a range of interlinked challenges. These include a sovereign debt and banking crisis, major adjustments to bring public finances under control, and of course, dealing with the social impact of all of that. In recent months, attention have all, has also been focused on the need to boost growth and rebuild confidence. But we are not starting from a bank page. We, uh, there have been major efforts uh, over the past years to improve economic coordination across the EU. And these are continuing at the, at the summit that, that, uh, in Brussels today. At the end of May, the Commission published its country-specific recommendations for each member state. And these include specific targets in the context of public finances and structural reforms that will lay the basis for a rest, uh, sustained return to growth across all EU member states. 
These recommendations, which have caused controversy in some member states, are due to be endorsed at today's meeting of the European Council. Given that Ireland is, is, is in an, an EU IMF financial programme, Ireland's recommendation was quite straightforward, although challenging, which was to implement its EU IMF programme. Uh, so Ireland is familiar with dealing with such recommendations, if you like, from its programme, but other countries now, all the other member states, also have these country-specific recommendations. Um, contrary to what many believe, the financial programme for Ireland is not just about fixing the financial sector or the banks, but also contains a set of recommendations and targets for structural reform to boost competitiveness and growth. Also, exiting the programme is not only a priority for Ireland, but it's also a priority for the Troika too. We all share the goal of Ireland exiting the programme. In addition to improved economic governance, there have been a number of developments which will continue uh, to contribute to, an, which will contribute to enhancing the stability of the European Union and the Eurozone in particular. Um, there, so th there have been a number of uh, key decisions taken uh, to try to strengthen uh, the Eurozone uh, and we shouldn't forget that all of this has been going on in the background. This includes, for example, strengthening the original Stability and Growth Pact uh, via what is often referred to as the six-pack of legislation. The additional two-pack of legislation proposed in November last year, which focuses on improving uh, fiscal and financial surveillance. The Fiscal Treaty, which of course uh, required a referendum uh, in Ireland and has been ratified now. And the treaty establishing uh, the European Stability Mechanism, which will be a permanent funding me mechanism uh, for countries in difficulty. So, in summary, there have been enormous strides made to strengthen the, fin the financial regulation and supervision uh, and the banking sector is being recapitalized and in some cases restructured. And this has all happened at lightning speed in EU terms. It may not seem like that to people, but uh, when you, you need 27 countries in many cases to decide things, it has actually taken place at a very, very fast speed. However, while it is clear that much has been achieved, there is still huge instability in the Eurozone. President Barroso said yesterday that this crisis is the biggest threat to all that we have achieved through European construction over the last 60 years. Faced with this stark reality, standing still is not an option. A big leap forward is now needed. So what next? Well, the European summit agreed already yesterday an important element of the way forward the mobilization of around 120 billion euro for immediate growth measures. Part of this includes a 10 billion increase in the capital of the European Investment Bank, which will increase the bank's overall lending capacity by 60 billion. And Ireland, of course, stands to benefit from this. As part of this growth agenda, there will also be work to complete the single market, tackle unemployment, and in particular youth unemployment, and promote trade and investment. The Commission considers that for genuine economic and monetary union to be established, we need a banking union, a fiscal union, economic union, and further steps towards a political union. This process should be progressive and start with steps that can be taken immediately without treaty change, as would be the case with the banking union. The news from Brussels last night is that there has been significant progress on this by the heads of state and government who have agreed on, a, on the road ahead for deepening the EMU. It is clear that in order to share economic risk, strong and integrated supervision of the banking sector is required. This would entail a single rule book, integrated financial supervision, a common resolution authority and a single deposit insurance scheme as part of an overall framework intended for 27 member states, so not just the Eurozone countries. President Barroso, however, has made it clear that any move in this direction must also include a genuine political process to give democratic legitimacy and accountability to further moves in economic integration. Irish people would seem to support a move in this direction. 
The results of an autumn uh, 2011 Eurobarometer poll showed that 78% of Irish respondents were in favour of European Economic and Monetary Union, with the euro as its currency. This is well above the EU average for that poll, which was only 53%. 87% uh, of those asked, of Irish respondents asked, uh, believed that the EU member states should work together to find a solution to the economic uh, and financial crisis. So moving beyond the crisis, um, in parallel to all of these developments, we should not lose sight of the fact that despite the urgency of the economic and financial crisis and the way in which it has hijacked, if you like, almost completely hijacked the EU agenda, uh, the Commission and the other EU institutions continue to work in areas such as energy, research, education, transport, infrastructure, climate change, etc., to try to further improve the lives of uh, the, the, the 500 million EU citizens. Negotiations are underway to approve the EU's budget or multi-annual framework, financial framework for the period 2014 to 2020. This budget will be an important driver for growth and of course will be important across all EU policy areas, including uh, the common agricultural policy, the EU structural funds, uh, research and innovation. And we can look forward to hearing from Monsieur Lamassoure, who is the chair of the EP uh, Committee on Budgets, who will play a key role in uh, this process. We look forward to what he has to say about this later this morning. So in conclusion, today we have an opportunity to hear from a range of distinguished speakers, and I would like to thank them for agreeing to share their thoughts about the ever-changing economic con context. I would also like to thank the Institute of International and European Affairs, uh, and particularly uh, Dahi O'Kelly uh, and Jill Donoghue, who organised today's conference, uh, and the Royal Dublin Society for uh, use of this, the, this wonderful venue. And I would like to thank you, of course, for coming today. I look forward to hearing your ideas on exiting the crisis, and I will be reporting uh, them back to Brussels.